Mixing with mic mixing tip. Mixing with the five frequency bands. Uh, when working with um, when working in the uh, frequency spectrum and, and in terms of working with mixes, primarily a lot of our work is dealing with frequencies and balancing frequencies. And so we work with equalizers to help balance out the frequencies of individual sounds. We work with compressors to help build up the density and imaging characteristics and movement um, and aliveness of those individual sounds. So a lot of times the compression will take certain frequency areas and make them more dense. And this is kind of where I want to start. Now, if we start with a um, our, our very basic thing here, uh, what I want to do is just kind of start here. Um, all right, should be able to draw uh, just a, a quick, oh, okay, there we go. Now we go. All right, so all I want to do here is just kind of set up like a, a, a basic um, uh, setup over here. So now what we're going to talk about is our frequency spectrum. So this is uh, 20 hertz. This is uh, 20 kilohertz. So this is, you know, we're, we're working within the full frequency spectrum here. And then we're going to talk about gain, right? So if you want to look at it from a DBFS scale, that's zero. And let's just say this is minus 120 and kind of talk about it from that perspective. And now I'm going to work um, from another layer here so I can go ahead and add some uh, individual uh, ideas to this uh, to this basic concept. So when working with different frequency areas, I normally just kind of divide them up into five different areas. And I kind of think of them uh, as, uh, as independent. So we have low frequencies. And uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll undo that, just kind of do a straight line draw here. Uh, so I have low frequencies. Still can't do it. Low mid frequencies. Um, and uh, mid frequencies. High mid frequencies and high frequencies. And, you know, so uh, whatever, you know, you can get into like the evenness of them. I'm not going to get into, you know, we can get into talk about different aspects of um, uh, how much the frequencies or what these cutoff points are. And I'll kind of do a little bit of that right here. I would say this is going to be somewhere in the 150 hertz range, but it kind of shifts around. There's sort of a gray area right here. When we go, so essentially the different bands, if we look at the different bands, this is going to be our low frequency band. This is going to be our low mid band. Um, this is going to be our mid range band in terms of frequencies. High mids, um, it's like high mids. Um, and then, uh, and then we'll, we'll just get into high frequencies. All right. So this is, these are, are, um, the five different areas that we're primarily working with. Now, each one covers a different aspect of the sound and it also images in a different place. And this is why it's important to kind of understand what these characteristics are. So as you start working with them, you have an idea of like when you're equalizing what it is that you're actually getting and what you're listening for. Now, in terms of the actual scope of mix, when you're working with a mix and you're working with different instruments and blending different instruments, the primary thing you need to understand is where do the fundamental frequencies of those instruments reside within this field, because that's so important. So if a guitar kind of kind of touches, you know, leaks, bleeds a little bit into the low end, but is predominantly in low mids and mid range in terms of the notes and things that it actually plays, then this is going to be a dominant area that you want to be careful about doing subtractive EQ on. However, you can filter under low ends or tighten up low end uh, from it, which allows the low frequencies to exist for instruments like the bass and like the kick drum, which have their fundamental frequencies primarily in here. The snare drum is going to have its fundamental frequency somewhere in here. Um, and so each one of these images in a different way, in a very particular way, in the speakers. And there is a front, back, up, down aspect to all of this that I want to talk about. So when we talk about low frequencies, low frequencies, we primarily feel as vibration more than we hear. Um, and because our sensation actually comes a little bit more as a vibrational energy kind of thing, it has a tendency to sink down in the speakers. And that's kind of a, and that's an important thing to, to understand. So from an imaging perspective, low mid frequencies. So this will just, this is basically a downward push. Um, this actually, um, the mid-range area will have a tendency to push things a little bit back in the speaker. So when you have a density of low mid frequencies, which you hear a lot in like Hammond organs and especially Fender Rhodes, they have a really, really dense low mid-range bases in a similar way. They don't pull forward. They actually set back in the speakers. Okay. And this is what part of what makes them so difficult to get them to image well. Mid-range 
speakers fit right in the middle. Like if you actually were looking at your speakers, it would be a box from your left speaker all the way over to your right speaker. And when you get these mid-range frequency areas, and I didn't even finish the uh, the frequencies here, sorry. So like if we're talking about one uh, 150, then here we're talking about somewhere in the four to 500 range. Uh, here we're talking about 2K up to about 6K or so. Um, and so um, these are, again, these are not like, um, these are not like, don't hold me to it, exact frequencies. They will kind of, you know, shift or kind of move around. And some of this will shift a little bit frequency dependent. Um, but these are the basic ideas. So I wanted to kind of follow uh, through with this. The next, um, so we got mid, the middle, this will pull things up to the front. This will pull things forward, a high mid frequency area. The two to six K range is where the articulation of the voice is and it will pull things forward. The tendency is when you don't want to he, or when you want to hear something more clearly is that you end up pushing frequencies usually in the 2 to 6k range and the problem here is that you can get a sense of harshness and uh and with all this and then as you go up 6k particularly when you go up like 10 or 12k and above then you start to get up into the air frequencies and the air frequencies when you when you get up into that it raises things up in the speakers so now what you have is like if you have a good and this is important because I wanted to to really focus on this concept is a difference between amount of frequencies and density of frequencies. So in other words, if you have a kick drum with a fixed fundamental, the idea is in order to make that dense, it's you kind of want to carve away some of the sub stuff underneath where the fundamental is, focus the fundamental with maybe a tight parametric and kind of dip after it. So what you're doing is you're kind of creating a focused area so that when you compress it, it actually adds density to the fundamental frequency of the kick drum. And this will help to open up area for the bass. So the difference there is that the bass has a moving fundamental because although it'll have a certain tonal character, when it plays different notes, its fundamental will be shifting from the lows up into the low mid frequencies and maybe up in, even up into the mid frequencies if it's getting really high on, on the bass scale. So the things that are important here are making sure that you focus things that can be focused and that you balance things that can be balanced. So the density aspect versus the amount aspect is really critical. The way that you get low end or richness of the low end is not by the amount of it, but it's about the density of it and the focus of it. So think of it as like um, when, if you take, for example, um, uh, something as simple as like air, and you put a lot of air, you compress it into a can. You know, so this is like you know working with the compression aspect. And you compress it into a can. When you press the the uh, cap on the top, the compressed air comes through with a lot of force. Okay, and you can really feel it. You know, if you put your hand in front of it or blow it in your face or blow it to clear dust out of your electronic components or whatever. So the compressed air is now focused and pushed through a really tight area. So when sound comes through a speaker, it actually can come through in a very soft, pillowy kind of way or it can come through a little bit more forcefully. So what the compression does, particularly when you focus the compression within particular frequency areas, when it pushes out, it pushes out more forcefully at those particular frequency areas. And that's where the focus becomes really critical. And that's how you kind of work with compression. So the place where you have subtractive EQ and you're working in a mix with different frequencies has to do with shaping what frequencies are necessary to that instrument. So in other words, above 6K is in general for most bases, not a really important area. And most of what you get up there is noise, buzz, hiss, you know, if you have an amp and, and stuff that actually does not add to the character or is not the fundamental character of the sound. So if you warm that up with like a soft um, uh, um, low pass filter on the top end, then you open up that frequency area for other instruments that do need it. The cymbals, right, um, of the drums, the, the uh, breathiness of the vocals and background vocals and things like that. So you want to have that. So when you clear away those different areas within the different frequency ranges, then what happens is you, you start to get a focus um, of the individual instruments. And then when you compress, the compression grabs onto those areas that are the fundamental shape and sound of those individual instruments and allows them to push through a little more densely. Um, so working with these um, main frequency areas, what you'll have in addition to all of this is you'll have a couple of different things. The, the primary um, 
thing that you have going on in this area, I'll do it in green. Uh, well, I thought I was going to do it in green. Hold on one second here. Uh, is uh, what we'll have is a sustain kind of uh, functioning through uh, this, the low and low mid. So we're kind of getting, if you're looking at the ADSR cycle, this is really sort of the sustain area. It's not as transient. The primary place for transients is going to be up in the high mid area. Um, this is going to be kind of a bridge between those two different things. So you will get sort of a warmer kind of transient energy in the mid-range frequencies and a sharper transient energy as you get up here. Um, like what's kind of interesting about this is that although it's generally short-lived, you also get a sort of sustained characteristic that exists in the top frequencies or the very high frequencies. And this is part of what brings out the air. So understanding the, um, uh, so this is, uh, we'll say, leaning towards transient um, in this area, the general energy, okay? So it's not like things can't sustain, you know, throughout any of these areas or be like there's no transients and low frequencies. Of course, there's some, but that's not the predominant force of the energy. So when you're working with your equalization and you're kind of balancing out instruments, you have to consider where is the sustain on the individual instruments. The higher you go up in frequency, the more that sustain area is going to rise up with the instrument. So if you have a xylophone or something like that, those higher tones are going to exist more in the mid-range area, and the sustain is going to exist more there than down here. So this is a relative thing that kind of slides and moves around with the individual instrument. Now, um, in terms of the overall balance, you have to kind of find your focus points. Um, so when you work with, um, with uh, focus points, you will find that like, for example, if we go into the frequency spectrum here, that you may have, like, for example, your kick fundamental might be here. Your snare fundamental might be here. The bass is going to cover a broader range of frequencies, right? So you're going to have, like, your bass kind of sitting, you know, around this area. If you have guitars and certain keyboards, like, say, for example, that you have a Fender Rhodes or something like that, maybe this is going to occupy an area that is predominantly right in here. Uh, let me take away that previous layer right there. So uh, maybe we have a couple of guitar parts, a brighter guitar part that sort of sits a little bit more in this area. So where are you going to focus it though? Fundamental instruments or instruments that have fixed fundamentals are easy to focus. So maybe you have, you know, a floor tom that's over here, a rack tom that's over here, or a couple of rack toms that exist in um, these individual areas. Um, and they're easy, they're temporary, they're transient, they happen over shorter periods of time, so they're easier to kind of work with and they can kind of punch through if they're really well focused within the balances of the individual instruments. But each of these instruments, including the bass, for example, will extend up here, and to me, this is the most fundamental area of mixing. This area between, say, like about 400 and uh, about 3K or so. This area here is probably the most important area. You need to have some representative energy of every instrument in this area in order for it to translate into small speakers like laptop speakers and things along those lines. So it's really important that you focus this. So even with the bass, if you have like a little small boost, like around 600 cycles or so, it will allow the bass note to kind of pop through. It's an upper harmonic in the bass that allows it to image and sit, and you can hear it in speakers. Same with the guitar. So if I focus this, I may focus the Rhodes at a lower frequency, or maybe a slightly higher one. The guitar may be slightly above there. And having these, picking these little spots where um, the harmonics or the attack may stick out or come through um, is important. So if you find different places for these things, then what you're doing is you're kind of fitting these instruments together, allowing them to kind of focus. So maybe this means rolling off a little bit more of the low end of the guitar to allow the roads to come through a little bit more and the bass to come through a little bit more, etc. Um, and carving and kind of fitting and puzzle piecing things together. Um, so this is like a... Um, a conceptual thing that is not just equalization, but also compression. Um, primarily, from the way that I work, I primarily work with a layer of more or less subtractive EQ, trying to filter away and carve away areas um, of an instrument, at least um, fundamentally with 
um, high pass and low pass filters, and then maybe with a pair of um, shelving EQs that are butted up against each other, sort of like a tilt shelf kind of thing, if you have the fab filter EQ. Um, that's like the basic idea that allows you to do like an overall bass treble tonal balancing, finding that, that tonal center of the instrument. Um, and when you do some basic shaping like that, you can actually do a general um, kind of tone up or fitting of the individual instruments so that they have their established place before you compress and kind of pull the overall sound together, get it to groove and move and be solid and image well in the speakers. Then you could shape it with equalization afterwards where you add a little bit of, you know, um, of gain in different um uh, small frequency areas to make those notes stick out within this area right here in the middle. Um, it's there's so much to talk about this, and it's hard to kind of kind of keep going on. But this is like a basic concept that um, is easy to forget about um, because when you work with the different frequency areas, remember that you're also raising things up as you make more high frequency density. You're bringing things down when you have focused low frequency density. Um, the low mid energy can kind of set like a nice solid warmth, which is like a, a depth characteristic, which sets things back. The high mid frequencies pulling things forward towards you. And the middle is really this fundamental area that every instrument has to have a little bit of that kind of sits right in the middle of the speakers. As you're working and balancing these different tones, you're moving things up, down, front, back. And if you start listening, from that perspective, as you're equalizing and the separation of instruments from each other in terms of their placement in the pan field and, and levels and everything else, then you can get a better and deeper understanding of how frequencies affect and pull together a mix. So it's all um, you know conceptual. It's hard to kind of demonstrate this because it's something that takes over the course of a whole mix, which takes hours and hours. It's not something that is easy to just like, oh, hey, here, you know, shape it up. And, and it's like you got a quick mix, uh, you know, for the most part, not in a short video like this. But anyway, this is a, a basic idea. If you understand this concept and, and look at the visual, look at where things sit in the speakers, that's going to be um, the primary way that you're going to achieve the uh, best mix results. So uh, it's a mixing with mic tip, mixing in the five frequency bands.